Questioning everything with Adam W. Episode 15. Do you want to do anything before we get started or should we just jump right in? Jump right in. I want to know what your questions are and I'm a little curious about how Canada does things too because mm-hmm. we're obviously very different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. as two countries and how things are viewed with regard to health care and, and issues about women's health and, and body autonomy I think are very different between our countries. Yeah, I'd guess, uh, yeah, structurally, as far as the law. Yeah. Um, so, everybody, welcome to the Questioning Everything podcast. Today we are talking about uh, Roe versus Wade, unfortunately. Um, normally I wouldn't dip my fingers into U.S. politics or, or social issues. Um, but this is, uh, this is something that interests me because of the infrastructure of the law uh, as a Canadian. Um, I'm fascinated by U.S. law. I'm fascinated by the U.S. Constitution and and how it came to be, as opposed to say Canada. Um, Anna, I've got you here today. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Did you want to say first of all um, your name and why you're here? Well, my what name you- is Anna Sapola, and you and I have talked about this issue. I think it over being really angry about what was going on because it's so short sighted. Mm-hmm. Um, but I work in the legal field. I actually work in the civil end of things. But you what does have that a mean? Place. I work in civil law, so I don't work in these kinds of. Um, actually, I would probably do a case like this. I don't know if we go that far, but I work in basic like motor vehicle accidents and things that happen to your house. So I work for an insurance company. Gotcha. But you know, this affects. You, in having the degree that I have, you have to know your basic constitutional law. Mm-hmm. And so, part of what you and I were talking about is, I'm curious to how Canada handles an issue like this, and how women, how a healthcare issue of this magnitude, you know, how you do it differently in Canada. Obviously, it's very different in the United States. It has now gone back very. to the state and not a federal level, because we have, you know, federal, state, and local level laws mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how you do it in Canada, if you do it the same way, if it mirrors no. it. No. No. It's a totally different structure, though. Yeah. Right? Totally different structure. Um, when America split from British uh, rule, it essentially mm-hmm. became one of the first nations in the world that was really free um, and obviously created a constitution to protect the people from government over encroachment or over authority authoritarianism um, whereas Canada we're a commonwealth we never we've never had any form of independence right I'm a, we're sovereign uh, we're basically we're subjects of the queen still okay. we're subjects of our government and our government issues privileges that we get or we don't get so we aren't like a free people um, so one of the things, if we were to even start, one of the interesting things that I've always found interesting, at least about American law, is that it's based on whether or not you're a believer or not, based on the idea that God gave people rights and governments inalibable take them away. Yeah. Uh-huh. Inalienable rights, exactly, and that governments take them away. And so there's this kind of painting which is obviously not very real, but there's this painting that um, every right is the right of any free individual. Um, And yeah, free individual at the time meant a landowner, but, Uh um, and then, and then after every, every freedom and every liberty basically being your God given right, the government then imposes limitations on it or restrictions based off of generally the common good, things like murder and theft and, you know, Mm -hmm. you can't... Social norms. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Whereas in most countries of the world, we have like a monarchic throwback where we are subjects to a crown, subjects to a king or queen, and we don't have freedom we have whatever we're given we've got what we're issued or you know so it's it's not like we stand independently as as individuals and then get imposed by the government we are literally just servants of the government and they could say whatever they want they could take anything they want from us and we really have no 
say or choice or whatever, huh. right? Whereas America has that illusion, but at the end of the day, there's a lot of countries like Canada that are gifted privileges by their oh. government who actually have more privileges than the and nation get, of free and, and independent individuals. Yeah. Right. It seems to be changing quite frequently. We have to remember when the Constitution was written, it was written by men who were slave owners. Mm-hmm. So they gave a African American gentleman, he was three quarters of a, of a person. And mm-hmm. women were not included. Mm-hmm. Remember, we didn't get the right to vote until about 100 years ago. Mm-hmm. My great grandmother walked, walked in the you know in the suffrage movement so that I could vote. Mm-hmm. So it's three generations from me did this. Mm-hmm. So we're so young in, in doing that. So I think since we're such a, a patriarchy, people have a hard time understanding that the Constitution, the rights that were given, were given to men. Mm-hmm. They're given to landowners. Women were property, and they owned people. Mm-hmm. And so when we go back to the Constitution, it's supposed to be a living, breathing thing that moves forward, right? And it's supposed to change and not go backwards. So there was the first 10 um, pieces of the articles of the Constitution, and then there were ones that were adopted after. And so with regard to Roe v. Wade, that is basically, it does three things. And it's the 14th Amendment is what we're going to talk about, basically. Mm -hmm. That's what Roe v. Wade comes to. Can you and, just explain quickly what the 14th Amendment does and says? Because if okay. you're not American, then it we've all heard of the Second Amendment, obviously, um, but not very many people are familiar. Protection. It basically, it's a citizenship clause. You know, you're born here, you're a citizen of here. It's, um, it's due process, and it also provides equal protections. So, privacy rights. Okay. Equal protections. Okay. Now, are those really? interpretations, or is that written in very clearly? And it's I'm pulling up something because it's very lengthy old English in, in the amendment. So it's you know giving you like an overview of it when it was amended, and you gotta think this is like 1868. Mm-hmm. It's when the Fourteenth Amendment was first codified into the Constitution, mm-hmm. and so it was during it was after the abol- um, the abolition of slavery. Okay. So it's mainly to give people who were enslaved individuals equal protection. So the, so and, it, just to frame it, there was no expectation at that time that women would be given more rights as a result of it. No. I mean, you got to think in our country in the 1970s after Roe v. Wade, women were granted the right to have to buy cars, to buy property, to not be considered property. Mhm. Um, we didn't have to ask our husband's permission to um, open any sort of accounts with banks. And so you couldn't, as a single woman, own any of that. Mm-hmm. As a married woman, you were a co-signer with your husband. But mm-hmm. that changed after Roe and um, the feminist movement moved that along. Mm-hmm. So that was part of what the 14th Amendment did. It's like, you know, I, I should be able to do this. I work. You know, women were more in the workplace. Now it's commonplace to see women working. Mm-hmm. But there was a time that you didn't see that. Mm-hmm. And you didn't see that in a lot of countries. But in the United States, I think after World War II is when you began to see more women in the workplace. And because definitely of necessity. After the 60s. Yeah, it's a necessity now. I mean, two, I mean, I don't have children, but the two of us work, you mm-hmm. know, to have our home. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, at the time, too, there is a, yeah. as men went off to the war, women had to fill roles in factories and do things and so exactly. you know, although not necessarily like an equal footing thing um, are you familiar with other countries women rights, women's rights I know that well with regard to Spain I know a little bit Okay. because in Spain they have no issue with the abortion the abortion issue is looked as um, medical for whatever reason the United States they like cross this like religious thing with regard to abortion rights. And it's, it states quite clearly in Roe v. Wade, because it was taken away from the states because they were not allowing women to have medical treatment. Mm-hmm. You know, an abortion covers several things. You can have a miscarriage mm-hmm. and seek medical assistance so that you don't go into septic, sepsis as a woman. Mm-hmm. Well, that's still considered an abortion in the code, you know, how they code it in legal terminology. 
you could have a, a tubal pregnancy. Mm-hmm. It's still considered an abortion, mm-hmm. even that's though it's the, not safe. That's where the right? baby is in the fallopian tube. In the fallopian tubes, and it, and that'll never survive. You can't transplant that. You can't. It can kill you. Mm-hmm. Um. So for whatever reason, they've got this whole thing about every life. You know, it's pro-life and it's this and that. It's not taken from a scientific perspective. In mm-hmm. other countries, it is. It's mm-hmm. viewed as a women's health issue. Mm-hmm. Well, absolutely. The I don't think that there's any disagreement with you there whatsoever. Um, as a Canadian, and just mm-hmm. as a as a person in the world, I think that the U.S., particularly the, the southern part portion of the U.S., is extremely unique in their desire to um, prohibit abortion so strictly. And you know, when I talk to people who are um, not pro choice generally too there's like really wild radical examples given exactly. like you know somebody comes in with a three month old baby and you know it's like we'll just back up a second because that's not what we're talking about that's that's not what Canada's talking about it's not what England's talking about or or France or Spain or, or anything. even yeah. Ukraine even you know you, you can go into some pretty crappy countries in the world and unless they're um particularly religious like an islamic republic or now i guess america yeah the the access is there just simply for the sake of people right it is and we have really poor um pregnancy care in the country Hmm. basically well you know and it's just you look at the infant mortality rate in our country is higher than it should be way higher um the because we don't because we have a for profit structure with regard to health care, not a lot of women can go and get prenatal care. Yeah. And uh, they're closing clinics that can. I mean Planned Parenthood is just not about abortion. Planned Parenthood is about pregnancy care. Mm-hmm. And many other things. Cancer care, it's not just for women, it's you know, both genders can go in. Mm-hmm. Um, but they get so narrow minded on it. They don't mm-hmm. understand, you know, it, and, and it's people that, even within my family, that I've had to have these conversations with. And, and it's just one of those you need to understand. It's not about the abortion. Roe v. Wade let out, you know, they, they put out perimeters in the case that said you can't do it after a certain time. Because, unless it's harmful to the mother. So you're unrestricted to a certain time. So, you know, these, these says, States, you know, you heard all this stuff. And I'm sure during you heard all the Trump stuff during his um, administration about, especially when he was running, about how it was past 21 weeks and all of this stuff. And that's just not true. It's not ethical, first mm-hmm. of all. And second of all, it has to be, you know, that it, it has to be either the child stillborn or the child has a defective um, issue that's going to be harmful to the mother if born, you know, carries out to term. You know, they're very specific about what happens. Mm-hmm. But what's unfortunate is the level of education with regard to um, human sexuality in this country is just poor. Mm-hmm. And unless you live like in California, New York, you know, the states that are, are keeping this open and putting it on our constitution amendments, because I live in California, we will be voting to put um, abortion access as part of our constitution as protected right. Which seems but weird we also, to me as a Canadian. Yeah, it just it seems does. weird. See, they just don't have, I mean, they just don't have the sexual education. And, and they're, it's like they're fearful, fearful to teach their children and they're just saying, don't do it. Well, you know how that works. I mean, you got a kid, you tell them no, they're mm-hmm. going to do it anyway. Mm-hmm. Right? Because of, your, because of own fear. And, you know, if we teach people how to take care of themselves, you know, in those in those states, and I wish I'd pulled up the stats because I looked at it earlier and then got distracted. You know, in the states where there is more education about sexual uh, human sexuality and mm-hmm. how babies come from and how to protect yourself and keep things away from STDs, you have a lower pregnancy rate. Mm-hmm. In those states, unfortunately, the Bible Belt, where you don't have um, that level of education or have a parent that will teach you that stuff, and it's hush hush and no one talks about it. You have a higher pregnancy rate mm. mm-hmm. because you don't have the education. I think if you have the education and you teach birth control and contraceptive methods, you, you know, if you're prepared, you're not going to have that issue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you absolutely. just don't have that here. It's it's ridiculous. Doing things responsibly, learning how to do things responsibly, because you probably, you know, this person might have want to have kids, but they might not want to have it within the timing that they're 
Uh, well, and you can have you can have birth up. control failures. Right? Oh yeah. You're doing everything you wanted. You know, you're being responsible. Mm-hmm. But the pill, condoms, dam, you know, the the vaginal dams, all that stuff. It's not a hundred percent. No, 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 no. It's not. You know, and we don't talk about that either. So Here, you're you're anyway. mentioning women's suffrage. Women's suffrage is something that uh, I've looked at, and p- one thing that interests me is how we, among people in the world, influence each other. Mm-hmm. And there's some movements that are started in Britain that move here, and there's some things that start in America and move outwards. For a lot of the 19th and 20th century, America was very much a pioneer of civil rights movements even though you could say that yeah they had slavery which uh you had slavery which you know then not every state did though california was a free state that that didn't happen yeah and and numerous countries like almost every country had slavery canada had slavery we don't like to talk about it but our railroads were built by chinese people that were essentially slaves they were lied to brought here worked to death and Indigen- uh, indigenous servitude basically yeah well it, it wasn't indentured servitude because there wasn't the same sort of deal that's another thing that i find interesting but it's controversial so i don't like to talk about it but um the forms of agreements where if you pay me five thousand uh, dollars you can you know come work here and work it off and stuff like that um that is really quite different than saying to somebody, hey, listen, we have work here for $2 a day, and then you get here and it's two cents a day, and in fact, you're lucky if you get paid and you're starved to death working on the Canadian railroads. Um, it was just li- it was lies, and to me, it was a form of slavery, even more so than saying, hey, if you come here and work off five grand, you could be free, or, yeah. you know, if you go to jail, do, do you want to be a an indentured servant instead until yeah. until you've worked off your your fee um and even in america there's there was a period of time where people literally did work off their indentured servitude and it wasn't the worst thing in the world but um but it still, wasn't great either. Yeah. no it wasn't great but all the world all the world over that occurred america tends to get the brunt for that um but it wasn't America doing it, really. America well, was like. Well, we fought a civil <clears throat> war over it, and that was part of the stuff. Was you know, slave, they threw that in with everything else. But you yeah. know, we we make a big thing out of it, and we have big fights. You know, we have such racism in this country, and continue. You know, has continued forever. It's been mm-hmm. we've been a country two hundred years. It seems Every, like we've everyone does. Two hundred years. Yeah. Everyone does, though. I don't yeah. see American racism as being extraordinary in the world. In fact. I see no, Americans as being less racist in many ways than other parts of the world. Other parts of the world are overtly racist. Uh, yeah, even I places that. that are heralded by people who claim to be against racism are deeply racist, like Japan. <clears throat> pretty, well, I see pretty dang that, racist. In Spain, I'm saying it because you know people are coming over from Africa; they don't have anywhere to go. So mm-hmm. coming over to Spain, you know. And, and, you know, over the Strait of Gibraltar, which mm-hmm. is basically a hydropole ride. And, you know, th- because it's so bad where they're at, they're coming to another country. Mm-hmm. You know, they're having the feudal wars over there and mm-hmm. their government switching around. Mm-hmm. And I see that as when I talk to my family about mm-hmm. certain things. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, explain to me why this is bad. Explain to me how they could not be, you know, they, they want to be a contributing member of your society. So why is this bad? You know, but we have the same thing here. So, with regard to Mexico. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think everybody's... Yeah. It was since the dawn of time, though. Look through history books. Yep. Everybody since the dawn of time has been trying to protect their uh, lands from somebody yeah, else. A little postage stamp. Yeah. Literally. A little postage stamp of yeah. mine. And culturally, yeah. too, um, I think there's something to be said. I, again, it's a discussion that I don't like to have because it's controversial, but culturally, yeah, I do support um, the preservation of like the indigenous culture. I do support the preservation of right so once we start getting into uh like say norway or britain is there a value to preserving some of the culture that's there or is that racist i like to be principled and and my principles to protect the rights of a culture to express themselves and to be themselves happens to extend to all cultures not just non-white right but again these are controversial things and and i don't like to bring them up because it could easily be misconstrued 
But my point being, I, I sometimes wonder if America's not like doing some really good contributions in, in her own way throughout time, throughout say, the last 200 years by leading not just, um, not just civil rights movements locally, but influencing the world with those civil rights mo- movements, being 10 times more people than Canada and five times more than the UK. There's a lot of strength. There's a lot of strength in numbers. American propaganda and media has been basically covering the world since its inception. America is the leader of media, which is now the newest like book. The book, the knowledge, the information is is the media, and it seems like maybe women's suffrage and things like women's suffrage or or ending racism yeah. has actually been really moved forward from American culture, particularly because of the spotlight put on it, right? The world gets to see it. Well, and I think that started, I think the rehash of actually saying a lot of stuff in movements going forward was the Women's March in 2016 or 2017, because it was a pro- it went global, which we had just expected to do it in the United States. And there were a lot of countries, they also had the same march. So that was great. And then you start seeing the BLM movement, the Black Lives Matters, you know, after, especially after Mr. Floyd was killed. Mm-hmm. Um, and you start seeing things. So we're putting spotlights on things that that um, no one's talked about that is taboo. You know, mm-hmm. you don't talk about those things. And you you want to be perceived as diverse, but you, at the same time, I think it's a lot of fear of others. So sometimes we do have these movements and they're great. I mean, I've gone out and marched every year. I went out on Friday last week because I felt I needed to, you know, get it out of my system because I was very upset. Um, and I do agree with you. I think that we do influence for good or for bad. I think some of our bad stuff comes goes across too. I think some well, bad absolutely. habits are picked yeah. up. You know, we do have bad habits in this in this country, mm-hmm. which are unfortunate. It's getting you know we see it going on to other nations, mm-hmm. but. I think for the most part, I mean, I, I like living here. I've lived here my whole life. I've traveled the world, you know. But um, what I've seen in the last five years has me concerned, especially the rulings that are coming out this week. Especially you- taking away somebody's 14th Amendment right. My right to privacy with regard to my conversation with my doctor federally were removed. Now, in California, I'm protected under HIPAA. And the police officer is going to come and ask me, you know, ask to see the records of what abortions they're doing and why and how they're practicing. Texas, it's not going to be like that. Right? So if you take that another step further, what's so damaging about this is if you take this another step further, like the furthest thing, the worst case scenario, I want your kidney. Give it to me. Mm-hmm. You're a match for me. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. You don't have no privacy over that. Body, body autonomy is what you're exactly. coming to. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the thing that nobody wants to talk about. They're just like, well, you know, yeah, I'm fine. I live in California. California, Oregon, Washington, New Mexico. You know, we're fine. But it, it at a federal level, it does not protect women. Did the 14th, amend- the 14th Amendment then is the only legal protection for body autonomy in America? It, because of the Equal Protection Clause, yes. Because it gives right to privacy. Okay. Right? So that's how I see it, and that's how a lot of the scholars see it. It's a right to privacy. And they just took that right and said, women's you know, right to an abortion, a right to her own body, doesn't exist anymore mm-hmm. at a federal level. Mm-hmm. And the reason that Roe v. Wade was decided is because it started a case in Texas, which is the same state that started the law's crap two years ago mm-hmm. with their abortion ban and, and the Supreme Court you know, doing its business now. And the woman that was there said, I'm entitled to this. It's harmful to me. You know, I'm not, I didn't ask to have the child. You know, it's, it's harmful to me and I should be able to, you know, have this medical procedure. Mm-hmm. Now, at the time, in, like in New York, I think it went because New York was legal and she wanted to travel to New York and Texas wouldn't, you know, allow her to leave. They were punishing women who left the state to have legal abortions in other states. Exactly. That sounds That's weird. Well, they're trying to do it now. I mean, mm-hmm. we've got, I won't say much, but there's some underground going on with women in California, and, and we're getting information out and making sure that if women need 
medical, we've got women working on them. Mm-hmm. But we mm-hmm. can't say much because nope. we don't know if we're going to be prosecuted, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. And so that's why it came down, the court, you know, in 70, 73, this came down in 1973, said women have a right to their bodies. And you can do it up to this time period. And after that, you know, it's the first two trimesters. So it's 15 weeks, basically. I think it was 21 in the original, in the original order, in the original law. But I think it's like 15 or 16 weeks now in, in California. I gotta look. Hmm. Um, but before that, it was state by state. The problem with state by state is what we're seeing now, is they want to punish women. They want to lock them up for doing this without any, you know, you, you hear some crazy stuff. and it, it Civil litigation. Civil yeah, litigation is the one I've heard been hearing now where yeah. you can sue your your partner That's or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you can sue anybody who they think, you know, they you've helped them or whatever. So your privacy rights are shot. Mm-hmm. Right? And the minute they can do that, they can go into your medical records and mm-hmm. that stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's private stuff. The things you tell your doctor is like the same thing you tell your lawyer. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And so that's what's so big about this is because you're pulling somebody's rights to their body, right to what's going on. It's not a baby, it's a clump of cells until a certain time. And that's what science tells us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and everybody agrees with that unless you also Earth. think that Noah's Ark is true and then suddenly you're exactly. an expert on on physiology as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, just, it's nuts some of the things I've heard. And there was a congressman who said, well, you know, because they won't make an exception for rape or incest, which to me is just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And some congressman, I'm trying to remember where I saw the quote, and it just, because I remember he said, stuck with me, he says, well, if you get raped, you just go to the hospital and you do that rape kit and it cleans it all out, you don't have to worry about it. And I'm like, what are you talking about? That collects DNA. Mm-hmm. What's wrong with you? You think that mm-hmm. holds us off? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. That's what we're dealing with, that level of ignorance. Mm-hmm. Ignorance. Yep. Yeah. You know, and it, it, and it, it comes from both ex- extreme sides, mm-hmm. you know? It's like, I get why people are upset. And, you know, I was raised Catholic. I am no longer Catholic. Um, I haven't practiced in the Catholic faith for probably 25 years, mm-hmm. close to 30. It was over the priest scandal because mm-hmm. we handled the case in which the diocese hid the priest. Mm-hmm. And I lost all respect. I'm like, this is not right, right? No, no, I, I got a Bible right yeah. beside me here, and I can assure you that it doesn't give a yeah. shit. Yeah. And that's the whole thing. It it's like, care. even the Bible says, first breath right a child in sure. my opinion is not viable until birth that's just me mm-hmm. that's my opinion mm-hmm. because at no time can that child actually survive without medical care mm-hmm. even if they're born at five months or six months the mm-hmm. lungs are still developing the brain is still developing you're in a NICU unit mm-hmm. that child is not going to see you know is not going to do well for another three months you're on life support you right you yeah. know we got to cook the whole time yep. to be person so you know i don't like to get into the emotional end of it because i always look at this like this you know this is what it says this is what the law says this is what the court says about viability but it still is it's medical and it's it's science and people who learn pandemic people don't mm-hmm. listen to science so it's been an interesting yeah. couple of years yeah yeah um, i mean just again coming from a canadian perspective i don't think that there's any argument there whatsoever um there's a lot of places in the world that would disagree with um mm-hmm. that perspective but not us um speaking of other places in the world america is obviously at the top of things in so far as technology and advancements and the largest economy in the west but there's some things that kind of dip it down things like education could get better um obviously civil <laughs> civil rights are still uh needing some improvement exactly but the the fragility of this 14th amendment do you see a world where this causes the american public and the, and the brains the geniuses behind american uh legal experts and stuff do you think that this will be uh kind of a trigger to really hammer out something that's undeniably rational 
so that it's so. not a matter of interpretation and it's not a matter of opinion, but that there's I think something within the states. I don't think federally. No. no, I just don't. They could have codified this. Obama could have codified this. Mm-hmm. It could have been done. They had a supermajority. It could have been done and over with. They never took this seriously. Mm-hmm. And now look what happens for 50 years. Mm-hmm. You know, we've had mm-hmm. this right for 50 years. Mm-hmm. And so I think the states will do it. The states in which they keep abortion legal and they keep it as a, a woman's right. I think that will be codified and it will be fine. At a federal, excuse me, at a federal level, we'll see. I know that there is a synagogue that has been talking about taking this case on because in, as I understand the Jewish religion, a woman's, um, they believe that it's always to save the mother's life. It's not about the fetus. It's about the mother because the mother is the, the homemaker. She's that she is the home. Mm-hmm. Without a mother, you, you don't have that home. Mm-hmm. So, there. I think they're going to see. Last I heard, and it's been rumblings, and about taking on a case in one of the states with regard to freedom of religion. I believe it's New York. Is it New York? I okay. believe so. I knew that I was, it, was one, it was one of the states, and they were going to start taking it up because, you know, they of how their view, and it is a violation of freedom of religion if you mm-hmm. look at it. Mm-hmm. So I think that if we, you know, I, I don't think with the current makeup of the court, you know, but I think it's going to take three years for it to go through the federal system, at least. So that the court makeup could change with regard to who's on the bench. Gotcha. At the same time. Unfortunately, it's a lifetime appointment. It's not something I agree with. I think it should be limited term. Um, and I do think it needs to be expanded because we've grown since the the nine members have been appointed within our legal. Okay, so we're back. A uh, little bit of a break there. Zoom, of course, ends after 40 minutes, so we had to restart. Thank you for restarting it because my computer was having some problems. No problem. So we got everything. I think that we left off with the Supreme Court being mm-hmm. only nine judges, and I think it should be expanded. Mm-hmm. Um, because you think the Supreme Court was established in like I just looked at that in 1789 it was expanded to nine judges in 1869 from what from I think it was like just five it became nine okay so they almost doubled and then up. yeah and so it, it, I think it always should be an uneven number or you're just going to have a stalemate but you know the, the types and complexity of cases have gotten bigger not just Roe, but, you know, we have a bunch of other cases. So they're cherry-picking what they want to hear. Mm-hmm. Uh, it comes through. That's one of my personal bi- issues with it. But our population has grown. The complexity of the cases since the founding of the court has grown. Um, I deal with federal courts in certain instances. There's some of the cases that I do do are in federal courts because of the issue or that it's in another state. And so we have to do it a certain way. Mm-hmm. Um so some of those judges in the Sacramento court have caseloads that are over 700 cases per judge. And most of those are criminal. And a lot of those deal with um, property or drug crimes. I know with us, it's a lot of drug crimes in Sacramento. It kicks up to an appellate court of which there are 12 circuits. And those sit and sit and sit. And then they finally get to the Supreme Court and I think we need to have more judges so that things get moved forward faster. And we mm. have more of a representation of what actually the population is and what actually uh, dealing with the complexity of the cases. Mm-hmm. Because some of the ju- the last two judges that were appointed, you know, underhandedly, in my opinion, uh, were administrative judges. So they didn't have any trial experience. They have limited uh, criminal or civil experience. The mm-hmm. so administrative judges... Uh, I'm trying to think. Here we would have something like workers' comp. If there's a uh, an injured worker, you go through a, a a system, but it's it's a court system, but it's more of administrative. It's not within a courtroom. It's different rules and regulations. They're very different than if you're a civil trial judge or a criminal trial judge. Mm-hmm. The last two, they're dealing with complex issues, and I don't think they really truly understand the complexity. They're just kind of there muddling about. And, and, and that, that out. that's that's one arm of the three arms of mm-hmm. government, right? Being that we have, yeah, judicial, legislative, and executive yeah, exactly. branch, exactly. right? 
So is there is there too much weight put on the responsibility of the judicial branch in this case? Because as a Canadian, or if you're from somewhere else in the world, it might seem odd that these types of things rest on a Supreme Court decision as opposed to just like plain basic law. Well, there are several rings you have to do in order to get to an appellate process where it would get up to the Supreme Court. I've had two cases when I worked in immigration law, probably like 20 years ago, that went that far. Mm -hmm. And there are several things. You have to find an appealable issue. You have to see if the judge will um, reconsider their decision. Mm -hmm. If not, you go up to the next one and and the briefing schedule is intense. Mm -hmm. But they don't just take any of them. Your case could sit there and be like, yeah, no, we're not going to take this one to look at. We don't think it's an issue that Mm-hmm. you know, is is something that will overturn. Because when it goes to the appeals court, the appeals court will send it back and you go through the trial process again or the mm-hmm. hearing process again and you can appeal that again. So it goes up a couple of rings. Mm-hmm. So when it gets to the Supreme Court, that trial, that case has been in the works for five or six years, if not longer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and I think it's like the ultimate decision of they're supposed to be the judicial minds. Absolutely. Um, we've got the, a similar system for the Supreme Court here, but the difference is, is that for for a lot of our civil rights, um, mm-hmm. we don't rely on a Supreme Court decision. So there is some, in fact, that we do. So once in a while, our Supreme Court has to protect us against the legislative branch. Mm-hmm. The legislative branch will do something like they'll they'll create a mandatory minimum law. In the past, that's what the, uh, the Canadian Conservatives did. Mandatory okay. minimum for possession of cannabis okay. mandatory minimum for possession of firearms um illegally exactly. and the supreme court's thrown them out as being unconstitutional so the supreme court here kind of acts as like i suppose a mediator for the legislative branch but okay, where the supreme court fails uh the people it's um like is there a chance of just simply bypassing them Right? Like, is there is there a hypothetical? No, really. There's no. I don't hypoth- think there's a hypothetical because you go through the appellate, appellate process, and everybody is entitled to their day in court here. Mm-hmm. And so, some of these cases come out of actual injustices of uh, a civil rights issue, mm-hmm. or something that picks apart the law. What they did in Roe v. Wade with this particular Mississippi law. So that went up. Obama couldn't have theoretically then used executive order to 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 make some he could have type had of the, the legislative branch could have codified um this issue 20 years ago they could mm-hmm. have codified it any time in the last 50 years they just didn't mm-hmm. so the executive branch though specifically as far as who is ever sitting in the presidential office do they have any authority over these types of things i think before this case they probably could have but i think it would be a legislative body that would actually make the law mm-hmm. that the okay. president would sign off on Gotcha. So we have to go through that process. Mm-hmm. And for example, we follow the same kind of process within the states. So we have our governor and we have a legislative branch here as well. Mm-hmm. The governor's like the president and then you have a legislative branch and we have our judicial branch that are the, the county judicial branches, um, the judicial courts. So as soon as the Roe v. Wade stuff, we knew because back in May it was all leaked and the opinion is the same opinion. Mm-hmm. So it was late. And I think it was done on purpose to give the states a heads up. Like, this, the, you know, there's going to be a shit show pretty soon. So mm-hmm. get your backs over. My state, they went through and um, drafted up 14 different pieces of law that are going through and being voted. To, with regard to expectancy of privacy, which is the main issue of this case. It's, you know, it's a privacy issue. Mm-hmm. And other things, you know, about not being, pri- you can't remove somebody from our state that helps somebody or you know we're not going to extradite you to another state like if i until that passes if i were to help somebody for example in texas texas said that they can they expect me to be pulled and tried over there as a felon well our state's saying you can extradite my my citizen of california Mm -hmm. to do that and things of that nature is to protect everybody involved Mm -hmm. It's um, interesting how that works because uh, I often try to explain to people who don't understand the United States to look at it like the um, uh, the European Union yes. <clears throat> in the sense that at one point 
it basically was like the apparent Euro- European Union in our lifetimes brand new. Um, but at the one point, the in the New World back in the the day in the 1700s, there was what 12 states or something like that, mm-hmm. and they were all essentially different countries. Different. Yep. I mean, that's the statehood we call countries states, um, and they just essentially uh, agreed to work together for open borders and economic unity and strength and against and, yeah. yeah and stuff like that so it's really kind of like a european union situation more mm-hmm. than say canada whereas to try to compare the united states to the provinces of canada when we are literally yeah. like a sovereign country under the queen we're subjects exactly. to the queen and the united states is literally a group of countries small countries but countries that agreed to work together within these confines and therefore it makes more sense when you have like federal limitations limitations on on you know and as i understand it states are responsible for medical laws as well we can change so there's obamacare which is the federal mandate on medicare and Mm. then other the states have within their position they can change it to um, work best for what they they can do economically. So they get a certain amount of money from the federal government to cover things. Mm-hmm. And states will be like, well, not only that, but you know, we're going to kick in this much, so this is also covered. Mm-hmm. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Through through, but you, you're talking more of the economic, the funding, where the funding comes from. I'm thinking more of the who has the authority to say what. See, if we if we back it up a little bit, one thing mm-hmm. as a Canadian that really fucks me up listening to all this uh, in the news is the idea that it seems like the government believes itself to have the authority to restrict absolutely everything unless there's an implicit right. Exactly. Which seems really weird in a country of people that were allegedly given their freedom by Mm -hmm. their creator and their indivisible rights, but except for all these things that they don't have rights to. So they say that, you know, they're going to be questioning the right to contraceptives and the right to um, same-sex marriages and it really seems odd race marriages too it seems odd because is there actually a legal premise that they have authority over everything unless it's implicitly protected by the supreme court well it looks like that they're going back to decided law so once these cases are decided, they're decided law. They can sit beside the law. But I think what has happened is these small groups of far-right religious zealots, in my opinion, mm-hmm. <laughs> just my opinion, um, they have gone through and have picked certain states that have, um, or certain cases that would bring question to law now, because other cases would be decided based on that. Does that make sense? You have a precedent, and then other cases do something else. You know, yeah. and so it may weaken it or it may strengthen it. Mm-hmm. And so I think they're finding ways to file lawsuits and file cases against uh, decided law in order to try to get it reversed to see how they would argue it now and to not when it was decided in the 70s, mm-hmm. was, you know, 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. Law has changed. People's perspective has changed. Um, so they could, you know, reverse the ability for women, unmarried women to have contraceptives which is what it was back in that time, mm-hmm. right? So I think that's one of the things they want to look at is the contraception issue. Um, I think it's backfiring on a lot of the states where they have removed this, you know, now that Roe's gone into effect and they're thinking about doing this, because I've, I've heard from more women than I know to count that they're ready just to go get their tubes tied and say, screw it, fine. Is, is there any law that somebody can cite though that says that this is the authority of the government? Or is it, is it up to the people itself. to protect it's themselves? It's the Constitution itself. So they're saying, this is how we set up our branch of government. This is how we balance everything out. And if we bring cases up against, you know, whatever law is existing and we think that it's an unconstitutional law, we have a right to fight that in the Supreme, up to the Supreme Court. Okay. And so the then, laws decided. So then hypothetically, because again, not being an American, mm-hmm. having to understand no, this no, okay. and unpack it, um, you live in Louisiana. As a person who has full freedoms and, and rights, of course, given to you under God, the people in Louisiana would probably agree to the God part more than yeah, many of anything us. Anything else, yeah. Um, they, 
they then, I mean, society's free. You could do anything you want. Are, are people in Louisiana creating legislation to, to reduce the rights? Like, okay, when you said that, you, that women couldn't get a credit card or whatever without mm-hmm. their husband's signature, the, the same sorts of things occurred in Canada, right? Okay. Um, all over the world, really. In, in some yeah. places of the world, they're still occurring. So this yeah. is also why I think that is, this is relevant to other people in the world because other people in the world are facing the same types of civil liberties right. loss where they never had abortion rights to begin with because they live in an Islamic republic or they live in a exactly. uh, you know Christian African country or wherever the hell they are. And they're, they face the same sorts of things. They don't have necessarily a Supreme Court to protect them, but now neither does America. So it seems that way. America that way. individual states now have to figure out the most rational and reasonable way to codify this stuff so that it's just simply inarguable. Well, and we have, you know, what was it, uh, six to eight states that had trigger laws so that it was ev- if ever Roe v. Wade was overturned, it would be against the law in that state period mm-hmm. with no exception. Mm-hmm. So it's going to go, you know, you're going to have half the United States will, you can go and get abortions in like 24 states, Mm -hmm. including Hawaii and Alaska. And half the states you can't, and it's all in the middle. I don't know if you've seen some of the maps that have been floating Mm -hmm. around on Facebook. So it's on the, it's the middle states. Mm -hmm. You know, you have Arizona where it's no, Texas where it's no, and right in the middle is New Mexico. Mm -hmm. So they're going to get inundated. Mm -hmm. But these people in Louisiana, for example, in Florida, places like that, they're going to have to travel pretty far to get to a local clinic. So and when we're talking about Louisiana, we're basically talking about like, like I don't want to sound racist to everybody listening, but it might as well be like Louisiana Stan, because it's a separate well, country legally. Well, every state that we all have, well, we all every state has a different culture, in my opinion. It's like California is mm-hmm. looked down on because they think. We, are too high taxed. We're kind of we were, we were always called the land of fruits and nuts, right? Because mm-hmm. we're pretty liberal out this way. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you get a new, you know, all the the port states mm-hmm. tend to agree uh, politically, mm-hmm. real line. Mm-hmm. It's when you move into the middle. So when you're dealing with states like um, Louisiana or states like Texas or states like you know Texas is a big state, but we have more people in California than we do in Texas. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But more population down. Um, and I think within the culture and what they believe in that state, you know, the state passes laws. For example, the Texas abortion ban that started all of this a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Um, they passed a law, so and filed a lawsuit and said it was unconstitutional. The Supreme Court refused to hear the law, so it stayed the law. So there, you can sue against you know different state laws, and it's up to the Supreme Court to decide whether or not they'll take that case before it sunset. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, if you don't live here, it sounds very complicated. It sounds kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's supposed to balance. I think Trump has thrown Trump threw a wrench in all of that. He, you know, I'm sure you're seeing a lot of stuff that's come out, but it's just he had the he had the legislative branch. And in his pocket, and then he started appointing not only the Supreme Court judges, but we have circuit court judges that are horrible right now. That mm. are Trump appointees mm. that had no no business being on the courts. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've got a little little stuff going on that's going to take years for us to fix. Mm-hmm. Well, that's just that. To answer this your point. question, I mean, within the states, the states can protect its own citizens. The reason we try to have federal laws is so that it applies equally to everyone. In certain mm-hmm. instances, mm-hmm. you know, it's like we just had a, you know, people in this country love their guns. I don't know why we are so violent with them. We shouldn't be trusted with them. You know, I'm trained. Mm-hmm. I've been a gun owner most of my life because I was going to be a law enforcement officer. And then I carried money for my dad's business. My dad had a restaurant. And because I had money, I had a concealed weapons permit for a number of years. I no longer worked for my father and, and I gave that up. And I never brought the gun to the home where I live now with my husband. Because mm-hmm. he doesn't like it, so I don't have it. Mm-hmm. Um, so speaking as a gun owner, I think it's important that you're trained and that 
you're licensed and you go through background check, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, they just pass a law because we have to have concealed weapons permits. So we have to have special licenses that show the need in order to carry a handgun in my car, on my person, because I'm not law enforcement. Mm -hmm. I'm not a police officer mm -hmm. in any, any way. Well, the Supreme Court just threw that out to states and said, you don't need it. You know, it's, it's a Second Amendment violation. People should be able to carry guns all the time. Well, in doing so, they have made things, they have made the world a, a less safe place. Because now, you know, you have to tell people, you can't bring a gun into my business. Right. You can't bring a gun to work. You can't bring right. a gun. In. So it's that same kind of thing is going on. And We're so, having a lot of, like, weird upheaval stuff. And we still have rulings coming out in the next couple of days. So we don't know what else they're going to mess with. <laughs> So in the, in a case like that, then if you can imagine that California is a country of its own, then yeah. that would mean that the country itself is trying to prosecute somebody. They challenge it by taking it to Supreme Court, challenge the decision. Of course, then if it goes to the SCOTUS, the Supreme Court of the United States, yeah. then now it's a completely different baby, and they say, "Hey, look what we just said. This person's allowed to have it. Uh, he's no longer going to be convicted." So at that point, yeah. it's to prevent convictions against somebody who would otherwise be punished for carrying or, a concealed weapon. Yeah, or somebody wanting a concealed weapons permit and being denied that permit. And this was the New York law, which has been a standing law for over 100 years. And that's what our laws in California are based off of. And it was, it was considered unconstitutional because it violated the Second Amendment. Hmm. Because we have in our Second Amendment the right to bear arms. Yep. Now, and it was, it was made weaker by a decision called Heller which means when, which basically states you're entitled to own a firearm. Mm. Okay. And just the fact that you're entitled to have it. And that's a whole big discussion because, you know, as a gun owner or a previous gun owner, it's like my whole thing is, you know, if you want to have a gun, lock it up, go to the shooting range. You know, I think people are overly paranoid about the boogeyman that's going to come get them mm -hmm. because you're going to be killed by your own gun, by somebody you know, rather than a stranger. This mm -hmm. is to play that out. Mm -hmm. Oh, Canada's okay. Canada's like far worse because if there's a gun, if there's a shooting in the states, then we everybody starts f sh filing down their spoons so that they don't cut people. I mean, <laughs> we, we're not allowed we to have, have a have concealed yeah. handgun or anything like that. Yeah. Even if you have a handgun, you're not allowed to have it on your person concealed. There's extremely excessive yeah, you rules must think in we're Canada. Crazy here. You must think we're crazy here. There's I think we're crazy too. Um, yeah. we don't have we don't have the gun violence that America has um, but we we're we're like the most cautionary version we're like the most mm -hmm. cautionary US state but an entire country of it and I don't I don't agree with it because I do think that I should be able to own something go to the range take it home lock it yeah. up stay licensed be, be responsible, responsible with it be and, safe and have those safeguards in place yep yeah, I'm, I'm not display. opposed to registration or background checks or anything like that because it's well, literally... It's, and we don't want to have that. We have that in our states, but mm -hmm. federally it's not mandated. So you have certain states that have absolutely no regulation, mm -hmm. which is what Texas had. And that's why we had the shooting that it was, 18-year-old AK-47 killing children, mm -hmm. is because there was no regulation in that state. It said he could buy it at 18, there was no background check, there was no nothing. Here we have a three-day point off period, it's a background check, all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, and I have no issues. Did you say with that. three day wait, waiting period? There's a three to five day waiting period really? when you purchase the gun. Oh, okay. It's a pulling off period. So you okay. purchase the weapon, they run yeah. you through a system, and you cannot pick it up for three days. That's reasonable. So you can't, yeah, if you're pissed off, is basically it. Yeah. No if you're pissed, pissed off, off gun purchaser. So, <laughs> I mean, your wife's having an affair, you go buy a gun, you can't take the gun home and shoot your wife. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. That's part of it. Yeah. Um, but we have these extremes, and so that's why we have federal laws and state laws, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. local regulations. Mm -hmm. so we have like three tiers and layers within, you know, you have federal, which applies to everything, that's our common law, and then there's state regulations with mm -hmm. regard to everything, civil law, criminal law, um, then you have local laws, which, you know, govern like police officers, and, you know, garbage, and property taxes, and all of that. So it goes down the layers. Now let me ask you. I, I, Go for it. I you, you don't know President Obama personally, but at no. least I'm assuming you don't. No. 
he did not codify anything and he had the opportunity to. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, assuming that he didn't see this coming either, do you think that there's a chance that the next Democratic president will codify something federally so that the people don't have to rely on the Supreme Court or wait for 25 years until they die? I'm hoping. I'm hopeful. I mean, right now we have a Democratic president in Biden, and Biden was his vice president, and Biden didn't see this coming. You know, the court, the Sorry, case was filed. I totally filed. forgot that you do have a Democratic yeah, a Democrat. president at the moment. I know. We have, and we have a woman as vice president that is deceiving, and she was the attorney general of my state that I supported. Um, yeah. So I'm angry at my own party because this could have been done. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they just kind of like whatever and found other things. There was so much that could have been done when Obama was president that before, you know, his first term that he could have done mm-hmm. as president. That mm-hmm. is very, very upsetting. The second half, he had Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell should get hit by lightning. But mm-hmm. um, McConnell uh, held that still. He's the one that is just waiting for um, the House or the Senate to return to a Republican majority Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i think the backfiring i think there's going to be a bigger backfire of the roe v wave than they expect within that party and all the stuff that's we're finding out that happened in january 6th leading up to january 6th i think we're going to have tighter races but i don't think i am hopeful they do not gain either house Mm -hmm. again Mm -hmm. and that we can keep it all as democrat as possible for a while longer because then we have the presidential race in two years so we have midterms this year Mm -hmm. and then in two years we have the presidential race Mm -hmm. okay so i i don't want to shit on president obama because i i I don't mind no i love him to death but i'm mad at him about this one issue absolutely but um and biden to be honest with you i just he's i just write him off but let's just say let's just say this for hypothetical sake just for the future there is a possibility that the president has that kind of authority he does. I think that if um, we would have to have a supermajority, which is the president's Democrat, the House is Democrat, and the Senate, and the Senate. Has, 60, has 60 Democratic senators. Right now we're split down the middle. Okay, 60%? Six, it has to have 60 actual senators. Which and would be what percent? 60 Democrats, 40 Republicans. Oh, okay, so that'd be There's 60%. In the Senate. Gotcha. So right now we're split down the middle at, at 50-50. And so the deciding vote has always been um, Vice President Harris is our deciding vote if they tie. Now, next question. The the okay. legislative branch then, mm-hmm. which is not the president's executive orders, but just the legislative of bringing it through the, passing House. a bill through the House and then the Senate and uh, or whichever order they do. Um, is that is that because it seems to me like a lost cause? I think because of who's in the majority at that time is a lost cause. They've been trying to get gun reform through since Sandy Hook, which happened under President Obama, which was the last school shooting of small children, of mm-hmm. ba- little kids that would be in their 20s now. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why with Uvalde, what happened in Texas, it, it's just like, it's happened again, and we've done nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I am always hopeful that will be able to do things to mm-hmm. change things but I think we have to be uh, in the majority of both I'm policies. talking specifically though for abortion as opposed to the I think it's going to take us 25 years to get this back maybe 10 So there's... I think it's going to have to be we're going to have to have a majority a legislative majority in mm-hmm. both um, the House and the Senate in order to get that through if that can't happen we're going to have to see if either the Supreme Court gets expanded or if somebody retires and then we get more of an even keel. Because there is one um, judge that is um, could go either way. Although he was, uh, promoted, he was brought in by a Republican, he is known to, we have 10 minutes, that's what I'm, okay. I'm being told. Yeah. Um, that he will go depending on what he sees in the case, more than mm-hmm. case law. You know, it kind of goes either way. So we're at a, we're at a five... It's a 6-3 what happened with the religious stuff. So those are all the conservatives, and we have three liberal judges, right? But but in the legislative federal government, there is legal, there is a window of legality. There is a, Are they strictly it would have prohibited? To to, they're not prohibited. They have to go through, and they have to 
write a law that says we extend this through and this is why and get it through the house and then get it through the senate and so there are the federal laws signed. then that that supersedes have, state authority yeah. in areas that would normally be state authority yes because okay. federal law is considered common so those codes are common law so that everybody possible. applies to everybody so it is possible i don't see it for a little while yet and i don't think the dust is going to settle on this for a long time mm -hmm. um I just think everybody's gathering up to see what they're going to do. And with midterm elections coming up in November and depending on what's being spewed, and there's a lot of ugliness being spewed about this, that I think um, the Republicans, the GOP in general, does not realize how upset people are. Because we had 70, mm -hmm. 70 80 percent of people are, do not agree with this. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. the whole population. Mm -hmm. And the reason that, you know, we've got to deal with gerrymandering and stuff that went on under... Um, under the last administration with mm -hmm. some of the voting restrictions that are going oh, on yeah. which makes no sense um because in the end of it and why we try to get people out to vote is there are more democrats than republicans in the united states mm -hmm. there just are about 75 percent of 25 is what i estimate yes you know and and we need to get the democrats out to vote they try to limit it you know in certain southern states because mm -hmm of minority, you know, issues and, and requiring certain kinds of identification and all of this mm -hmm. and making you have separate identification of vote, which are like voter cards or something. We do not have that in California. Mm -hmm. um, we just show our driver's license mm -hmm. and then a registry mm -hmm. when I go in person. I have to, <clears throat> if not, I have to sign it exactly what it looks like on my, my ballot envelope. I need to mm -hmm. sign it exactly how my driver's license looks. Mm -hmm. they match it against my you, you guys are you guys are super loosey goosey compared to the yeah. rest of the world i'm just going to say that yeah i know but the it's things like that the things that you consider to be like restrictive the rest mm -hmm. of the world just considers normal like voter well, registration <laughs> having to have two pieces of id having to bring the card yeah. that was mailed to you that's all totally normal all yeah. of the world and we do it I america's mean, just really loosey-goosey when it comes to that stuff well and what people don't understand do do? is actually how you do it within i was a member of a grand jury for about two years and so one of the things we did do is during election year we all went to a different polling place place to see how voting occurred Mm -hmm. Just to monitor, it was not anything, you know, nobody was doing anything wrong. We just, you know, we wanted to educate our county population how this happens. Mm -hmm. And you go and how the ballots are brought in, how they're issued, how the boxes are locked up, and how it's taken to the state to be counted. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't understand that entire process. Mm -hmm. And so there's big assumptions. Like in this last election, there were all these big assumptions about you know, you could do this or you could do that and people could vote twice and all this. If you just volunteer and watch, you know, and observe or volunteer at a voting place, you'll understand how voting is counted and how it's done. And it's taken a lot more seriously than people yeah. give it credit for. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it really is. We have, you know, every, every county has their registrar that brings it to the state capital so mm -hmm. that it's counted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's still loosey goosey. I'm just saying that, like compared to the I rest know, of the I've world, you guys are like, fine. you guys are you guys are really backwoods for voting laws. Um, so, last question here. Go for it. We are privileged, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I I see I I don't see America sitting down anytime soon. I think that there's going to be a solution, but you guys are at a unique position right now where you might as well be Afghanistan. You might yeah. as well be Iran. You might exactly. as well be Turkey, right? With, with the religious... Um, Craziness going on right now. <laughs> yeah, the authoritarianism, essentially, where people are using their religion to impose their values on others. Nowhere in the world can we rely on our Supreme Court, let's say. Let's yeah. just say that. If you go to those countries, their Supreme Court is is just it, it, they've got a full majority of republicans in there right yeah yeah is the with the equivalent and nobody has a chance there's absolutely no chance on that level but a rational legal rational legislative 
paper option where somebody says this is the bill and you know feel free to argue it if you wish but this is based on a concrete medical science it's based off of the opinions of the best medical professionals we have well they had uh, they had briefs like that in this i think it's going to have to be a change of societal norms i mean we have this whole i think in every country we go through this we go through a huge pendulum swing both ways Mm-hmm. You're in the center for a little bit. You swing hard left. You swing hard right. If you're lucky, and I think we're <laughs> it, yeah, and I think we're in a part where it's kind of this hard right, where people feel like they are not listened to by the government or whatever. So they're putting these nut jobs up, you know, like Lauren Boebert or um, Marjorie Taylor Greene, which I'm sure you know the the two ladies that they're nuts. I'll send you stuff. Um, but you get this hard swing because they are just like them. And yes, they're a little quirky and yes, you know, they'll, they'll be unfiltered. Like Trump was supposed to be this unfiltered, um, like my best friend kind of guy. And he was far from it. He was a grifter. Um, but people like this illusion of they're just like me mm-hmm. and they'll understand, you know, they're not talking above me. They're talking at my level. And I think that's where we are right now with this religious stuff is people are just, they turn to religion to make, when things are down, you mm-hmm. know, you see an uptick in the churches and and we've gone through some pretty hard economic times, you know, in the last couple of years. And I think that that's part of it. And I also think that people just turn to religion and use that as a way to force things through. This mm-hmm. is how the world, I see it, you know, because whenever somebody says, you know, well, God says, I'm like, who's God? Mm-hmm. Who's how many religions do you think there are in the world? You know, mm, whose Carl, God are you referring to? Ask them if they're referring to Karl Marx, and then that'll shut yeah. them up because, you know, there's the same people who will rail for uh, hours so against... Oh, what I'm going to do is the first time I see someone praying on a football field, I'm just going to call the local satanic church and be like, hey, they're praying on the field. Knock You're stuff out. Yep. You let's know? go. It's right? go time. Bring out your... It's your, go time. They didn't think about that. And so that's mm-hmm. the whole thing is, whose God are you talking about? Whose who's to say mm-hmm. that your way is the right way mm-hmm. you no. know because it, that's that whole thing and i think there's this big argument that's going on and it's people you know it's a fine line between religious freedom and religious oppression mm-hmm. there's a very fine line we found that out during the crusades right you don't mm-hmm. agree with me i'm gonna cut your head off mm-hmm. i think that people fantasize about what things should be like and they, because certain things make them uncomfortable and they use this work of fiction and to base it off it. Mm-hmm. You know, rational people and people that have a, a certain level of education, well, I can't even say that because a lot of these people are educated and they mm-hmm. still believe this, right? Mm-hmm. There's like some sort of thing that goes on. I don't get it. Um, so I am hoping that we will get through a legal option that will bring back these rights because they've removed rights. And I'm hoping that that comes with the, the lawsuits that are being talked to and we have the ACLU and they tend to take on a lot of cases that will go against something like this. So, mm-hmm. you know, we're just going to, I'm going to have to wait out. I'm pissed. And trust me, I'm pissed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can <laughs> well imagine. I'm pretty angry about it. I can well I'm imagine. Pretty, I'm pretty, pretty angry. And I've called the people that represent me and said, what are you, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. You know, they threatened to do this for 50 years and now they've done it. What are you going to do? You know, sell your hands more? Or? Suffice to say, America is in a position that a lot of nations in the world are in. And I think that if anything good comes out of this, if there could be a solid and reliable legislative solution, then I other think- nations can look at that same solid, rational legislation and then lobby their own governments. And uh, exactly. you never know, One America helps. might just lead the rest of the world into another civil rights movement. We'll see. I'm hoping. We're under a minute now. Yeah. Unfortunately. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. As always, it's great to talk to you. We always have a good time. Absolutely. Absolutely. I appreciate it. And I appreciate the perspective. And uh, it's been great. It's been great. Hopefully, I'll see you soon. Absolutely. In person. (laughs) Heck yeah. All right. That is it. The Zoom conference has ended. And uh, I am... I'm camless for the moment, but thank you all for watching and listening. And uh, 
It'll be interesting to see how things turn out in the next 20 years, I guess. Cheers.